The chemistry of addiction takes place mostly in the brain's limbic system located in the center of the brain. This area is also known as the brain's reward center, and it responds to new information from the nervous system by releasing chemical messengers called neurotransmitters that pass signals from one neuron to the next. When it comes to addiction, the most important neurotransmitters are the ones that are released when we do something that's significant for our survival and success. Once our neurotransmitters are done passing along their chemical messages, they are usually reabsorbed back into the neurons of origin. There are two major kinds of neurotransmitters in a healthy brain. First, there's excitatory neurotransmitters which stimulate chemical energy to the target cells. Secondly, there's inhibitory neurotransmitters which keep their target cells calm. Serotonin is an inhibitory neurotransmitter that helps regulate mood, appetite, and sleep cycles. Endorphin is an excitatory neurotransmitter that is released when we exercise, when we are overstressed, or in a lot of physical pain. Endorphins help us cope with pain. By far, the most important reward chemical is dopamine. It's released whenever our brain believes we should take strong action in remembering our current behavior. Dopamine levels rise in response to pleasurable experiences like eating. Dopamine is also released when we are in danger. The exciting sensations felt when dopamine levels rise reminds the brain to engage in actions important to our survival. The downside of dopamine is that it can largely drive addiction when artificially manipulated. Addictive drugs alter the brain's healthy release of dopamine and other neurotransmitters. In addition, as the drug wears off, the brain tries to exercise its defenses to restore balance. After using a certain drug over the long term, the brain will reduce the number of neurotransmitters and receptors available to it to try to moderate the drug's effects. This leads to what is known as hypofunctioning reward system, making natural highs harder to come by. This contributes to addicts exhibiting new psychological disorders that they didn't have before their addictions. Heroin and other opiates like cocaine and morphine are some of the most addictive substances on earth because their structure is very similar to endorphins, which are a group of hormones secreted within the brain and nervous system enabling a number of psychological functions. They are peptides that activate the body's opioid receptors, causing an analgesic or pain-relieving effect. Opiates bind to nerve cell receptors in huge numbers, creating a feeling of euphoria. Opiates create far more powerful reactions than any natural stimulus. Once the artificial high is experienced by the brain, the brain craves the experience again and again. Alcohol upsets the balance of neurotransmitters that allow body and brain to function in unity. Alcohol binds to a number of different receptors including those of acetylcholine and serotonin, which explains its initial pleasing and later sedative effects. More alcohol means slower communication between neurons. As the brain becomes accustomed to alcohol over long-term use, the brain tries to compensate by releasing excitatory neurotransmitters to speed up signal transmission. So after heavy regular drinking, if the flow of alcohol stops, the brain is left with out-of-control synaptic firing and nothing to calm it down. Heavy alcohol users therefore may get the shakes when they stop drinking. Cocaine is an effective stimulant because it interrupts the reabsorption of dopamine and other important excitatory chemicals like norepinephrine by creating extremely high concentrations of them. Nerve cells are overstimulated and the user will feel pleasure from the dopamine and energy thanks to the norepinephrine. But because norepinephrine creates such a flood of neurotransmitters, the cocaine depletes them and more and more cocaine is needed to produce the same high. The effects of smoking meth can last up to 12 hours versus one hour for cocaine. Meth is incredibly effective in its ability to create addiction. Instead of blocking the reabsorption of dopamine like cocaine does, meth causes the release of excess amounts of dopamine. Over time, an addict's brain, in an effort to self-regulate, will eventually force neurons to release an enzyme that destroys all that extra dopamine, as well as the brain's ability to produce more dopamine. 
As a result, meth users will continue upping the dosage, seeking a high that cannot be achieved. Even the natural release of dopamine can be exploited by certain foods. Studies of rats have shown that when given easy access to high sugary and fatty foods like bacon and chocolate and cheesecake, the rats not only avoid their normal food, but continue to eat the unhealthy snacks even as they are shocked in the process. Over time, the rat's brain develops tolerance to the chemical response to junk food by desensitizing their dopamine receptors exactly like the hypofunctioning reward circuitry caused by drug addiction. Conclusion, don't use drugs. And if you do, get help. Your brain is too valuable, and so are you. For more information, visit the Institute for Addiction Study. The link is found in the description.